that good? Uh,
section um, and then he finishes that role and none of us in the room breathed and then he started to cry yeah. and it was the right amount of space and he carried us across that gap and nobody moved yeah the other cool thing about that is just before that uh, boom, boom, boom. that's not in the music so that's Bowman's interpretation and the composers here and, like, <laughs> and what's interesting is whether it's, uh, you know, there is that whole thing about when somebody plays your piece and doesn't play it anything like you wrote it, and then you just want to raise your hand from the audience and say, that, that's actually not what I wrote. Don't, don't, like, evaluate me on the basis of that rendition of that piece. You know, you want, so there's that thing. Uh, but the other side of it, whether it's a piece that I wrote or that somebody else um, wrote, there can be more than one interpretation, but there's also a wrong interpretation, right? Mm -hmm. And so here was a classic case of what he did there made the music work, and it's not in my ink or maybe how I would play it, but it absolutely satisfied what the intent of the phrase was and was the way that Bowman would play that. And so, you know, that was another smile there. It was just like, wow, that's different, but wow, that's cool. I like that. And it works for the music. Yeah, I agree. Other observations. Who haven't I heard from? Yes, yeah. I really like the mallet choice. Because, like, it's <laughs> hard enough for the passages in the upper register, but they're soft enough to get a warm tone of the bars in the current. This is an impossible piece and in instrument. Five octaves, you got a corral, and you have flying notes. <laughs> Na naming a mallet in our bag that's going to work. So I agree, like, wow, this mallet allowed all that to happen. And, you know, sometimes on the loudest stuff, it was just borderline with that core coming through, and maybe you'd want something a little softer here, but then you needed that for all the articulation. But I agree, like, as far as having a mallet for that piece, um, yeah, I, I like the choice. Yes. Me? Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> um, I thought it was just a really incredible demonstration of just, like, accentuating peaks and valleys. Um, just the dynamic range is really, really good. Yeah. I, I agree with that, and I would underscore it in this way. Um, and you can tell me whether or not this is true, uh, because we're going to, we may or may not get to talk about memory today, but the one aspect relates to memory. Um, I had a sense that, that Bowman's playing along and he's, you know, he's thinking of what's next and how to play and he's doing this thing. And then I, I felt like as he got into it, he would listen to what was going on with the music, his playing, but hear what was happening and respond to it. So like he'd hear this phrase, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna carry this a little further, well, I'm gonna go down low, and sort of like 
not only a studied, oh, here's what happens next, but a live response to what you were hearing. Would you, would you say that's true? Or was it like, no, I, I'm just thinking of what the next measure was. There was a sense I had that you're hearing and like uh, in the moment performing based on what you're hearing. Um, kind of. I, I don't really think about that when I play a piece. It's more so just like remembering things and then just kind of, I don't know how to describe it. I just kind of go with what's happening. But I think some of that answer is what I'm saying. <coughs> you're hearing and you're going with what's going on and writing that in the moment. And, and that to me is some of where the peaks and valleys went today in that piece. That it was even a little beyond, yes, I intended to have that as a high point. But in the moment with a live audience in this room and I'm playing, there, there's something that happens uh, that's different from in the practice. It's kind of to tack on, or to tack on to that uh, peaks and valleys kind of thing. It's just in the hands themselves. I thought the balance was really good, and the melodic lines and anything that's cool is yeah. accentuated enough, but like not too much. And especially evident in the part where there's the the kind of double verticals going on, and that outside mallet's got the melody, and that was just it was right there, and that was really cool. I could not, I can't imagine. It's so difficult. There's a lot of that. In piece yeah a lot of that because a lot of notes are happening and notes are happening at the same time and some are more important than others and so we might not even notice that we're listening we're hearing the melody ba -ba -do -ba -do -do. but there's another melody in that hand by the way but I'm hearing the soprano just fine mm -hmm. and in the chorale SAPV four voices in that chorale but about the second phrase into the chorale, there's a suspension chain. And at first it's in the alto, and then it's in the tenor, and then it's over here. And he's bringing those voices out, you know, which is not an easy thing to do on marimba, but I agree with you. Balance matters, whether it's of our four mallets, making a decision, what is the important line, and then balancing but also in chamber music and all your ensembles, commercial, classical, otherwise, always be listening with balanced ears. Is the spotlight on me? Is it really, really not on me? Am I in a duet with this person? Uh, and making those those decisions. Um, all right, other observations, you guys? This isn't necessarily a technical thing, but I thought that was like a really good example of someone who's completely engulfed in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's always like a special thing to watch. Performer is engaged himself or herself in the piece, in the performance, uh, it pulls us in. That then we become engaged because they're engaged in connecting to it. Yeah. Kind of taking back, uh, piggyback on, on what Isaac said. Yeah. Um, when he was uh, toward the end of the piece, um, getting out of the uh, role and um, at, toward the climax of the yeah. role. And into the reprie into the reprise, yeah. I can see like a little like grin on Bo's face, and it, it was just very refreshing to see um, like a performer who was almost kind of observing the music uh, right. while he was playing it instead. Right, of, like, the duality of it. I'm watching and and enjoying this <laughs> moment, but oh yeah, I'm playing it too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well done to both folks. or not, but uh, 